My name is Chad with Greenlight Life, and I am a commercial cinematographer. What does security mean to you? Is it strength? Is it protection? You know what it takes. Discipline. Time. Grit. Introducing the vault Pro Series. Built with 12-gauge reinforced steel. Hi. Uh, I'm a plumber. I fix things. You know, sinks, toilets. You get the picture. Oh, jeez. Mm -mm. Today we're talking about three simple ways to make your footage more cinematic instantly. I say instantly because you don't have to have extra gear, anything like that. This is how you're using your fundamentals. Now, the last few clips I just showed were a couple of my recent projects, and you could say that those were cinematic because of the gear I was using, the cameras, the lenses, the lighting, all that stuff. Uh, but today, to prove that wrong, I'm going to be using only a Sony a7 III just to show you, as I mentioned, that these are fundamentals uh, that can be carried across whatever gear you have. So uh, let's dive in. The first tip is something that took me a long time to figure out, and it's still, I think, sort of a trademark look of more amateur filmmakers. So once you master this, I think you're gonna immediately be seen more as a cinematic style cinematographer. So uh, that is to light from the opposite side of camera. So even right now as we're talking, you'll notice my key light is hitting me on this side, whereas the camera is coming from over here. Uh, if the camera were on the same side as the key light, I start to lose all dynamic in my face. Everything starts to sort of wash out, and it's something we call front lit. It looks sort of amateurish, it just looks, it, there's no dynamic to it. So this is a front light, uh, you can see it kind of just washes out straight on my face. So by simply taking that light and putting it on the opposite side of camera, you're going to retain a little more contrast in the face. You're going to, and not even in the face, I mean, just anything in general, your subject, you're going to retain more dynamic, more contrast, and it's going to look overall moodier and just better, more cinematic. Now, I know when you first get into filmmaking, lighting is a little bit scary. You don't have lights, you don't know how to work lights, whatever it is. You don't need lights. Uh, utilize windows, utilize natural light. So for instance, here's me standing next to a garage door. We just opened up this garage door. We're using the light pouring in from that garage. And you can see if we film from the same side as that open garage, I look washed out. There's no dynamic to my face. But if we just flip around a little bit and use that light either behind me, maybe we use it three quarters, maybe we use a half light, you can see how much more dynamic my face is getting. And uh, that goes for anything, whatever your subject is, it's gonna create a lot more dynamic of a look. Tip number two has to do with keeping all of your light sources the same uh, Kelvin temperature. So what I mean by that is, you know, like daylight, you're at 5600K, uh, indoors tungsten light, you're at like 3200K. Right now I've got the overhead fluorescence on, they're at like 4300K maybe. I've also got a Kino Flow set up here at 5600K. So I've got all these conflicting uh, light sources and especially when they're hitting skin tones, they're gonna start to muddy them up. You're gonna start to get weird tints, green, magenta, uh, like this light is probably casting a little bit blue on my skin tones and back behind me that wall is actually white but it's probably looking pretty orange kind of just gross muddy because of those overheads so uh, watch what happens when all I do is flip off these overhead lights so that the only light I'm using is 5600k so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna have Kyle flip off the overhead lights in three two one See what a big difference that made? Now there's so much more contrast. My skin tones are on point. And yeah, the background's dark. If we wanted to light that, now we could in a controlled manner with the same color temps of lights. Now, as you get more advanced, of course, you can add different color temps for practicals and things like that. But in terms of skin tones you, uh, and things that you wanna keep white, you really wanna keep the same light temperature across the board. For instance, think of this light that, I, like I said, I've got set up as a daylight light. Just think of that as a window. Right? If I'm gonna be filming in a house or something like that, I don't have lights, I'm gonna go stand next to a window and I'm gonna turn off all those orange tungsten lights overhead and you're gonna get something like this. When you got those lights on, you're gonna get that muddy skin tone. So this is with a tungsten light above me set to 3200K and a 5600K light to my left here. And as you can see, my skin tones are sort of just getting that muddied look. <laughs> Maverick always looks good. So I flipped that Quasar to 5600K. I took a step forward, so it's kind of giving me a rim light. I've got my key light here set to 5600 as well. So my skin tones are all the same, and what's going on behind me should start to look a little more white. 
Uh, here's another example from a, a recent project I shot. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's really high key. Everything's white. It's, it's a comedy. It's supposed to be bright. Now I used all daylight sources again. If I had any orange bulbs going on, we'd start to muddy up. We'd start to lose that white look. His skin tones would start to get a little brown. So uh, yeah, color temps all the same across all your lights, at least on skin tones. The third and final tip we're talking about is camera movement, specifically smooth, slow moving camera shots that you know you see in movies and it just adds this majestic cinematic feel. Um, and it's so hard when, you, when you're first starting out because all you have is your camera, you try and do handheld shots and you, it's just shaky, it, it never looks like how you want. So you need something to stabilize the camera. I think a lot of people chalk this up to, well, I, I don't have the budget, I don't have the gear, I can't do this. That's just not true. Here are three different ways to achieve that kind of movement depending on your budget level. So first up is a gimbal. If you can afford a gimbal, you know, there's, there's pretty good gimbals ranging from like five, 600 bucks all the way up to thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. But these are things that are pretty much pick up and go. I mean, once you get this thing balanced, you can get great looking, truly cinematic style footage. Um, the next budget option is using a tripod. Now, when you think tripod, you think pan or tilt, and that's kind of what you're limited to, but get a little creative with it. Maybe lean out with the tripod, and as you're pulling it back, you can get a nice uh, you know, cinematic pull, like you're almost on a short little dolly or a slider. That brings up another one. Sliders are fantastic for these. Um, and then finally, the if you have no budget, literally you have a camera and a lens, you can still do this. One trick I've learned that I'm sure a lot of YouTubers out there have showcased is using your strap as a sling. So I've just got the strap up here. I'm gonna loop that strap underneath the lens. And then I've got it hooked onto the sides here of the camera. Get it leveled out. And now I can kind of take out some of that handshake. A little bit of a crane move. You know, you can get some side to side stuff. One more thing to keep in mind with camera movement to really give you that one more step up is utilizing foreground elements. So, you know, you have your subject here, you have your camera here, put something between your subject and the camera. It just adds another layer of depth and it makes it look that much more cinematic. You can see an example here, we had the camera on a tripod and I walk by it and we just pan. It looks fine, but to add a little bit more of that cinematic flair to it, here it is on a gimbal as I'm walking past this pole and we use that pole to add that extra step of depth. So that's all I've got for you. Three tips on how to make your footage more cinematic instantly. You don't need to buy things to make them more cinematic. Use what you've got, utilize these fundamentals, and they can stick with you across whatever kind of gear you have now or you may grow into in the future. If this video helped you out, please hit that thumbs up button. That really, really does help me out a bunch. It helps these videos be seen. Uh, if you think someone else might benefit from this, share this video. Subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more good stuff, cinematic tips and tricks, uh, gear reviews, you know, all that stuff coming. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time on Greenlight Live. Thanks so much for watching.